So I'm going to go quickly here. If you look on here, this is a Maori law. And this comes under the Wakanaminga. But this is a different document to, they call this the government of Neuterini. <laughs> Neuterini is New Zealand. But they work under some strange system because, as I said, sometimes they use the Declaration of Independence, which is called the Whakaputanga. And this has many restrictions. I'm not going to read it, but it has many restrictions about laws and legislation and the native chiefs and all of that. But they rewrote that and they came up with this waka meninga. They're trying to make you think that they're the same thing, but they're not. And under this waka meninga, all of the parliamentary restrictions that were put on them in the whakaputanga, if you're outside of New Zealand, you won't understand, but if you're inside of New Zealand, you'll understand. All of the restrictions that were put on them here one of the main ones is that they use native chiefs or native tribes. And under this one, they have to be born to New Zealand. Under the Wakamaninga, they've removed the native chiefs and they've removed the native tribes. And so it can be basically anyone can work within it, within those laws, and they don't need to be born to New Zealand. Now, it all looks very nice here. Oh, dear, that does come up. Oh, all right, whatever. It all looks very nice here. I don't think it matters. Is there anything on there? Okay. It all looks very nice here, but um, that you look here, they've got their uh, kotihanga, whakananga, mangatanga, rangatiranga, some, some, something. And this is the power structure, sh structure that they want to work under. And it looks really nice for the non-Anglo people, all right? Non-Anglo mean only New Zealand Maori that are born to New Zealand. That's what I'm talking about, non-Anglo. Okay, so it looks very nice. And they call this Aotearoa Neuterini. Sometimes they call it Aotearoa, New Zealand. And what you've got is a, a lot of, what they're calling it now is that they're saying that the whole Pacific area, the whole Pacific area, which includes many, many countries, many of the, many poor, well, I don't think they're poor, but they reckon they're poor. They are called Aotearoa. And then they're saying that New Zealand is a state of Aotearoa. And Aotearoa is governed, I'm not going to go there, it's a long story. Roa. So I'm saying that this is an entire Pacific region and this is just our country. Okay, and this region here operates under this. And this region here operates under this. I do believe that New Zealand and Australia, Canada and America are, in, in my conspiracy theory, are being governed under two governments. One is a legitimate government and one is a government being run through their Indigenous people in a sneaky way. Now, New Zealand has gone many, many, many steps further than Australia or any of the other Anglo countries. New Zealand is the country to watch because whatever's going on in New Zealand is coming to your countries first. Now, New Zealand under the name New Zealand is restricted and it, it governs together with what we have in New Zealand is called the Treaty of Waitangi. The Treaty of Waitangi in the third article made all of New Zealand native people uh, subjects of the majesty. 
as subjects of the Majesty New Zealand, all people in New Zealand, including Anglo and non-Anglo people, are re uh, their governments are under restrictions of the 1689 Bill of Rights that I've been already telling you about. Now, under the 1689 Bill of Rights, the monarch is restricted in her power. The religious leaders are all restricted in their power because the 1689 Bill of Rights is actually a Bill of Rights to protect uh, Protestants from the other religions. So that was made the restrictions on religious leaders from all the other religions. And it also put chains on the government and what the government could do to us. And it also put our basic rights that we are entitled to. So when you think about the word New Zealand, you can tie it to, bind it to the Treaty of Waitangi, and then you bind those to the 1689 Bill of Rights, which restricts all of the government powers. Now, if you're going to look up here, if you look up here, um, if you look up here, you can see here they've got this Maori government and they've got here Aotearoa and then they've got New Tirini. Now, New Tirini is the word that is in the Whakaputanga, the Declaration of Independence, and it's also the word used in the Treaty of Waitangi. But this word Aotearoa is a new word and we're going to have another video about that. We're not going to have it today. You can see over here that it says, it says Maori government of Aotearoa, New Tirini. And, but then they do a sneaky thing. Uh, this Aotearoa, what I'm saying is in this shadow government, Aotearoa is not bound to the treaty. They bind it to another document called the Tiriti. And under the Tiriti, the Tiriti is not stamped by the royal seal. So under the Tiriti, it's not bound to the laws of the, the same as the Treaty of Waitangi. So the Tiriti, any government that is run with the Tiriti as their founding document is basically a lawless government. They are unrestricted and they are absolute powers. They have absolute power. Um, and if you look down, so it's got the uh, Treaty of Waitangi with the 1689 Bill of Rights under New Zealand, which is a legal government that is restricted. And then you've got this Aotearoa, New Tirini, with the Tiriti, which is a government that is absolute and has no restrictions. And they've done this sneaky little thing that you look down here, they've got the, this is the Maori government of Aotearoa, New Tirini, which is absolute with no restrictions. And they say the administrative body for, and then here's the sneaky thing they do, for the chiefs of the United Tribes of New Zealand. When they use the word New Zealand, it goes back under the restrictions of the 1689 Bill of Rights and the Treaty of Waitangi. So what they do is they've got this shadow government that is lawless, that functions behind the restricted lawful government that has restrictions on them and then they do they 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 force many many laws on new zealand people uh from the shadow government but when they need to be using it for international agreements they can't do it by themselves because they need a government a proper restricted government body that is an elected government body. So then they flip over to New Zealand, the name New Zealand. And so my hypothesis is that New Zealand is working under two completely different sets of government and one, one government, the Maori government of Aotearoa is hidden behind the New Zealand government so that they can function in the world. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how this Aotearoa 
Chiriti absolute government is being used by the United Nations. Now, one of the things they also use is this fake flag up here. Now, they're calling this the United Tribes flag. And this flag is, or I'm not going to go too much into the flag, but I'll just say to you that the flag that was given for the Declaration of Independence is a legal flag, flag from King William. And it had a white outline on the, it's called the Canton, in the left-hand corner it's called the Canton. It had a white outline and it had four stars that were five-pointer stars. But this flag, and they're claiming that this flag here is the flag that King William gave to them for the Declaration of Independence. But in fact, this flag here is an eight-pointer and it has a black outline in the canton. And so the, the actual flag that was given to the New Zealand natives by King William can't be used with the declaration of, uh, sorry, is used with the declaration of independence under the name of New Zealand. But this flag here is a fake, fake flag and they use this for their unlawful Tiriti Aotearoa government. And that way that they're not breaking any laws by using the New Zealand flag that is tied to uh, the 1689 Bill of Rights and they're not using King William's flag which is tied bound to the Declaration of Independence. So there's a lot going on in New Zealand with these two governments. Now they're doing the same over in Australia when they gave them a flag in the 1990s. They're doing exactly the same thing. They're still sorting this out. They've done the same over in Canada and they're doing the same over in America too where they have a shadow lawless government to carry out all their sneaky activities and then they have the real government to sign up, to sign off on the papers to make everything legal. And sometimes the document that is the legal document has only a few words from the shadow government and then that gets passed into law. But then once that's passed into law, they flip back and start using all the laws that they've put into this shadow government. And what this is why you're finding that you're not understanding what the laws are going on at the moment. So let's go and have a look what the sneaky United Nations is doing with this government of Aotearoa and the Tiriti, whatever that is. Let's just see what the sneaky buggers are up to. And then it looks quite good here because that you've got Treaty of Waitangi and Tiriti o Waitangi, which are two documents, and then it's got the principles. And now let me just see here. This all looks very good uh, that they've put them. And then you've got the government perspective which is actually working within this laws here. And then you've got your Maori perspective, which was working in this unrestricted laws here. And then look at the sneaky bastards, what they've done. Just have a look here. Then it's not in the same. This all comes under section nine. All right. And this is how they're working in their two legal systems. One has laws and one doesn't. Then they've gone and added into your legal system, sneakily, they've tagged it on, the United, De United Nations Declaration of Indigenous Rights. Now, they're doing this in Australia. So they're all working under the Tiriti o Waitangi. The Declaration of Indigenous Rights cannot function under the Treaty of Waitangi because mostly because it forbids foreign governance for a start. 
So that's why they had to go through this other way. Now look how lovely it looks. This is, they're going to come under this law called the Tikanga law, which is customary law. What does customary law mean? It basically means that they can make up any laws that they like on any day of the week and you have no control over it. And so it's called tikanga law. And this is why they want you to follow this tikanga law. And they're using tikanga law or customary law under the Tiriti o Waitangi. And the Tiriti o Waitangi is a lawless document. And it's run by the government, the queen of government, not the majesty. This is run by the corporation. And why is it run by the corporation? Because there are no legal restrictions on it. They can basically do anything they like. And this is called the Queen of New Zealand or Queen, Queen of New Zealand or the Government of New Zealand or Queen of New Zealand. The Queen Government, which is different to the Majesty, which is the Majesty Queen of England. So anyway, here is your customary law. And then what they're going to say is we're going to make these laws up. And then if what you want to do, if what the United Nations wants to do fits with the Tiritio Waitangi, then you can do it. And there's going to be test one, test two, test three, test four, test five. All looks very nice and lovely, doesn't it? Then over here, here's another lovely thing that you're all going to be rubbing your hands together, how lovely this is. You're going to have your rangatiranga authority, which means that the chiefs are going to be in charge. You're going to have your relationships, your obligations, your collective benefit, your reciprocal guardianship, yadi, yadi, yadi. And then you're going to have your crown engagement. And this is how they're going to side skirt all of our rights, all of our constitutions are going to be side skirted. Now, this here is all Maori and English. So, this is how they're putting all of the Anglo people underneath the governance of this because they're using it for all New Zealanders. So the Anglo people that were protected under the British Bill of Rights no longer have their protections. They now are under the Tikanga law here, where they have no power. Now, it does look quite good for the non-Anglo people. That you see here, just have a look here. That you see here that this is in section nine. And you see this is in a separate section. So it's separate from us. And this is what they have to do with Lois. So what they've done is they separated these two. And then they've got the government, which is under here, and the Maori, which is under here. And this is separate. But look over here. Now it changes, just in the fine print, a little bit smaller. What they've put us in is the appendices, and they've put everyone in the same appendix. And now what you've got is you've got your Maori version of the treaty, which, which removes the native chiefs, and it removes... This, it, re, it totally removes the 1689 Bill of Rights, totally removes it because the United Nations can't function under the people's rights. The United Nations has to function under human's rights. And why can't the United Nations function under these rights? Because these rights, the bill is to the government and to the majesty. But under these rights, the bill is back to you, all right? So that's why the United Nations can't force, because in actual fact, if your rights are damaged seriously, 
It's actually the bill is sitting with the monarch. That's where the bill is. You see. So the United Nations has all of these laws that they're making. And if they're not upheld, if they were under the 1689, the bill would be to the majesty. But they want the bill to be to you. So what they've done is, in this one, they have included the United Nations into New Zealand law. And I'm going to show you this thing called wrapping, all right? I want to show you this thing called wrapping with the eraser. Just rub that out. I'm going to show you this thing called wrapping, and you'll understand. Right, it's a long video. You can stop it halfway through and then come back. But honestly, I, I kind of need to keep these videos together. So I'm just going to do it in one. It's about, I think I'm about 15 more minutes. Okay. Um, so this is called wrapping. What they do is they put one law on the outside and then they put another law on the outside here and that encompasses the laws that are in the middle so the power lies with the the outer layer not the inner layer all right the outer layer controls and then the inner layer does not and so on the inside, they've put our treaty, it doesn't say Treaty of Waitangi, but it might, they might add it. They haven't done it yet, sneakily, but they may do it. So they haven't actually said here Treaty of Waitangi. We don't actually know if they're talking about, the words matter. We don't know if they're talking about our Treaty of Waitangi. They're just only talking about a treaty. And here, they're just talking about a treaty and they haven't said Waitangi. And then they've got the translation in here. What they've done is the, 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 the King Treaty was the English Treaty of Waitangi. That was the king and the blocker to everything. What they've done is they've moved it down a notch and they've put the Maori version in charge together with the United Nations and their indigenous family. And I'll... There's your treaty partners there. So here are the treaty partners. You've got one, which is the Treaty, the Maori, 